Uh, hi, I'm Margaret Scott with the New York Southeast Asian Network, and we were thrilled to have Meredith Weiss, a professor at uh, SUNY Albany, here today speaking about contemporary politics in Indonesia. Uh, and Meredith, it's so great that you could come. And we are most lucky to have you because the election will be called sooner rather than later, maybe even as early as April. Um, tell me what, what you think uh, are the important issues of the election? So for this coming Malaysian election, the key issue that voters say matters to them is economics. So the cost of living, inflation, job opportunities, and so forth. That said, the larger landscape suggests that key issues will include religious rights, um, both on the side of Muslims' claims to particular prominence within Malaysian politics and society, based on numbers and tradition, as well as non-Muslims' rights within Malaysia. And personalities, communal politics, all of the usual mess of issues that arise in a Malaysian election. You're right. And it's, uh, from what I've learned from you, it is remarkable that UMNO and the Barisan Nacional look like they're going to win, despite just a couple of years ago losing the popular vote and the huge scandal that uh, the Prime Minister Najib is facing. Uh, so if we have, it's amazing that that has happened. And then the other amazing thing is that 92-year-old Mahathir is back in the political game. And I wonder if you could explain, he's created a new party, mm -hmm. uh, which has kind of overturned the opposition landscape. And could you talk first about uh, Mahathir and then why Najib is so strong? Sure. Um, so Mahathir's new party, uh, referred to as Bursatu, is a party that's modeled on the original days of UMNO. So it is a communal party with a platform of, of a Malay communal position. At the same time, it is a fiercely anti-Najib party. So uh, Mahathir has, many have said that he just resents the fact that he's no longer in charge and that he can't simply change the prime minister at will, but um, he has really come out against Najib's reliance on money in various guises and alleged corruption, and then formed this party together with former Deputy Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin, his own son Mukhriz Mahathir, and others. So this party not only changes the electoral map, as you've said, by bringing a communal party into a non-communal opposition coalition, but also brings a new charismatic leader into the fray. So Mahathir himself is contesting and is the opposition's prime minister designate, although he said that he would only be prime minister for two years. And that's largely because the goal on the opposition side is that Mahathir be able to bring in rural Malay votes, uh, because those voters have historically been closely aligned with UMNO and not reachable by other opposition parties. So. That really does disrupt the electoral landscape, but it is not at all clear what effect that will have. The BN still looks, the National Front still looks more likely to win, um, largely because the opposition is so disorganized. But the BN itself is not in an enviable position. Um, so some of this is that Najib, as you've noted, has managed to claw his way back from not looking terribly strong a couple of years ago with the height of the 1MDB discussions globally, not just in Malaysia, the fact that the coalition, the BN, had lost the popular vote in the last election and so forth. The economy is now doing better. Najib's, Najib himself has been able to rally the support within his party, which is what really keeps him in place, not the popular vote. He's a prime minister rather than a president. Um, but he also has been able to help to fracture PAS, the Islamic mm -hmm. party, which has been a linchpin of the opposition up until now. PAS now has formed two different parties. So there's still PAS, which is not part of the opposition coalition. And then there's party Amana Negara, the National Trust Party, which is part of the coalition. PAS itself is playing both sides in some ways. Mm -hmm. And it basically looks like PAS will be going it alone, but will serve as a significant spoiler. If we assume that PAS commands somewhere around 20% of the vote in surveys that ask in a three-cornered fight who people would vote for, overwhelmingly among Malay voters, um, that means that PAS could either, PAS voters, if there isn't a PAS candidate, could either throw their support to UMNO, which has been courting them, or to the opposition with which they've been allied previously. So that swing vote is hugely substantial. 
Um, so part of why Najib has been able to maintain his position, why the BN looks like it might win again, is really that the opposition has been fractured because of strategies related to uh, legislation around Sharia and so forth um, that have allowed Najib really to court some POS voters and to gloss his own Islamist credentials and his party's Islamist credentials, but also just because this has thrown the opposition into such disarray such that they then are more likely to ally with, with Mahathir and Bursatu as they have. Well, thank you for that. It gives us all a way to um, approach the election when it comes. Thanks. Sure. My pleasure.